Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start with a uh, test review for Unit 1. I'd like to go ahead and start with LG1. LG1 basically talks about GPS as well as GIS. Okay, so GPS uh, stands for Global Positioning System. And basically all you need to know about this, guys, is that Global Positioning finds your absolute location. Okay, your absolute location, and it uses that and it finds that, excuse me, using satellites. So it uses all these satellites and it needs at least 24 of these satellites to function correctly and it uses these satellites and it pinpoints your absolute location again and it does that by finding your latitude and longitude. So that's GPS, Global Positioning System. I'm going to go ahead and erase this. All right, the second thing in Learning Goal 1 is GIS. And GIS is Geographic Information Systems. And basically what that is is computerized mapping. So it adds info to a map using uh, computerized mapping. So it could add elevation. It could add land usage or streets or political administra administrative boundaries or it could add a death rate or perhaps literacy rate any information that's added to a map using computerized mapping uh, is technically GIS and GIS is very useful when studying geography okay so continuing on with our test review we're going to go on with physical processes. All right, in physical processes, this is very simple. We have two types of processes. We have internal and we have external. Okay, internal meaning what's going on inside the earth and there's only one type of internal process. It's tectonic forces and we have uh, a couple types of tectonic forces and you guys are very familiar with those. There's this where two tectonic plates come together and that is convergent. There is this when two tectonic plates move apart and that is divergent. Okay, and then there is this when two tectonic plates slip past each other and this causes earthquakes and this is transforming. All right, real quick, let's go back to convergent. That can create mountains. Divergent can create uh, rift valleys. All right, external processes. These are processes that occur on the surface of the earth, and these are weathering, soil building, and erosion. All right, and you guys are real familiar with this from uh, your earth science class uh, back in 7th or 8th grade. I'm not sure which. All right, again, you have transforming boundaries with tectonic plates. You have divergent, which can create a rift valley. And you have convergent, which can create a mountain, a mountain like the Rocky Mountains. Okay, Rocky Mountains. So that's an example. Alrighty. Let's go on. Let me erase this. Alright, as far as external, this is our first type of external, and this is erosion. Okay, water erosion created the Grand Canyon as rocks were taken away. Water erosion. Okay, and this is powerful. It's the most powerful type of erosion. It occurred over millions of years. Millions of years. Alrighty. Uh, there's also glacial erosion or ice erosion. Glacial movement over thousands of years created Yosemite Valley or Yosemite Valley. Okay, so what we're going to talk about now real quick is another physical process. This physical process is called deposition. Okay, and deposition is when something, in this case silt, is deposited. So silt, and silt is a organic material that's found in rivers and it's carried the entire length of the river. And at the end of the river it has to, has to go somewhere. So it's like the mouth of the river is kind of spitting all this silt out. And all the silt settles and it forms this 
this landform we see here, which is called a delta. Delta. All right, so again, through the physical process of deposition, depositing silt at the end of a river, you will get a landform called a delta. Uh, climate is lame cow, and we didn't talk about uh, the entire lame cow. We talked about the L, the A, oh, not the A, the M, E, the C, and the O. So the latitude, the mountain barriers, the elevation, the continental location, and the ocean currents. All right, so the latitude, remember, right here is the equator, and right here is the Tropic of Cancer at about 23 degrees north, and the Tropic of Capricorn at about 23 degrees south. So here, remember, we had a tropical climate. So within the tropical climate, the biomes you're likely to experience are a tropical rainforest, maybe a desert, uh, usually very warm types of biomes. All right, and then at 60, roughly 60 degrees north, I think I went a little too high there, and 60 degrees south below those areas, below those areas are polar, polar. So this is where you're gonna see like your tundra biomes, polar. It's very cold up here, very cold. So this is the biggest factor that affects climate. And between those areas, you're gonna see the temperate areas, the temperate. So in the temperate areas, uh, you can see a lot of biomes. You can see marine, you can see coniferous forest. Um, really a lot of biomes you'll see right there. But latitude, again, is your biggest factor that affects climate. Okay, your next factor that affects climate is M for mountain barriers. Mountain barriers, and mountain barriers really affects precipitation. Okay, remember, with mountain barriers on the leeward, excuse me, on the windward side of the mountain, you're going to get a lot of rain, and you're going to get this possibly vegetation because of the rain you're going to get with the orographic precipitation. Orographic. Remember, as the rain comes up, as the moisture comes up, it's going to cool off. It's going to lose pressure, and the rain's going to fall. Okay, as it comes back down, it's going to heat up, it's going to evaporate off, and you're not going to get very much rain over here, and you're going to get the rain shadow. The rain shadow. So again, that is mountain barriers, and it affects mostly your precipitation, and you'll see that in the Pacific Northwest in America. Okay, the next factor that affects climate that we're going to talk about real quickly is elevation. Okay, so if two cities have the same elevation, excuse me, the same latitude, and one of them has a higher elevation than the other, the city with the higher elevation is going to be colder. As you see here, the ice cap has the higher elevation. So the higher you get, the higher the elevation, okay, it's going to be the lower the temperature. Pretty simple. All right, the next one we're going to talk about real quick is continental location. And this one can be a little bit tricky. Sometimes people don't understand what continental location means, but basically it means if you're where the dot is here, you're going to have a more varied climate. And if you're where the dot is here, you're going to have a more stable climate. And that's because the ocean uh, doesn't lose temperature as quickly. Ocean is stable so the ocean doesn't heat off heat up or cool off very quickly so as the wind uh, passes over the ocean it's going to have the same temperature that wind is going to have the same temperature as the ocean and the ocean doesn't heat off or cool off very quickly so the coastal cities are going to have a more stable temperature whereas the land can heat up very quickly and can cool off very quickly so that explains that continental location all right, the last one we're going to talk about is ocean currents. Okay, and ocean currents, uh, I don't know if you can tell here, but they generally go in circular patterns. They generally go in circular patterns. Okay, let me erase that. And they are the heating and cooling system of the world. 
heating and cooling system. So let me write that. So there's the heating and cooling system. And again, if you were by a cold ocean current, say here near California, uh, the wind is going to pick up the temperature of the ocean and it's going to take on that temperature. So if you're, say, in San Francisco and you're by a cold ocean current, that wind is going to be very cool and it's going to cool off your temperature. All right, so that is LG3 climate. What about LG4? LG4 is all about regions. There's three types of regions. There's formal, uh, there's functional, and there is perceptual. Right, the first one we're going to talk about is formal. And formal regions have clear boundaries. Clear boundaries. Right, and as you see here on this political map, there are clear boundaries right here of Libya. So this is a formal region. For, uh, formal regions can be proven to exist, to exist, and data can be collected. All right, so examples are political units, political units uh, like we see here, or maybe climate regions, or vegetation, or maybe language. Anything you can prove exists, and you can go and collect data on it. All right, the next type of region is what's called a functional region. Oops, functional region. So functional regions work uh, together, and I'm not sure if you can tell what this is, but this is a Verizon uh, cell phone map. And this network works together. All these little nodes, these little cell towers, all these little green dots, they work together and they create a functional network uh, that you see, the red, the Verizon cell phone network. So functional networks work together. Some examples might be uh, I-35, a delivery area, a delivery area, um, anything that works together. So maybe a uh, like a power network, a power grid, anything that works together is a functional region. All right, the last type of region we're going to see is perceptual. Perceptual is based on opinion has no clear boundary. Okay, oops, I'm not writing very good here. No clear boundary. All right, and this here is the Bible Belt. And you can see there's no clear boundary to the Bible Belt, you see? See how it kind of fades off and you can't really tell where it ends? So that's no clear boundary. All right. So perceptual regions are based on stereotypes. Stereotypes. So you might assume girls from California are kind of oh airheads or airheads or ditzy. That's just an assumption though, and you don't know if all girls from there are airheads or ditzy, but that's just kind of the assumption people make, and that's a perceptual region. So it's based on stereotypes or opinion, and there's really no clear boundaries and. Perceptual, perceptual regions, in my opinion, really aren't real. It's just kind of what people think.